good morning from southeast Belgium. I'm uh, just south of Upen and I'm in the Belgium High Fens. It's uh, one of the most highest elevated points in Belgium. Belgium is quite a flat country, so we don't have a lot of uh, hills, valleys and mountains. But uh, this morning I've come down to the Fens and I'm around about sunrise time. It's just before 8 a.m. And I'm gonna try and get my first image. It's quite chilly, it's about three degrees. And uh, the light's looking not too bad. I was hoping actually there'd be a little bit more cloud to my left, a little bit less cloud to my right where the sun is rising. But there's quite a nice pink hue in the sky. And uh, I'm hoping to get couple of images today. It's the first time I've ever been here so despite looking on Google Maps doing a lot of planning it's always interesting to come to a new place because you're on a voyage of discovery trying to find the best places to take some images. So the first image I've gone for, I'm using a uh, 35 to 100 millimeter lens, which is the equivalent of a 70 to 200 mil full frame. And um, I've actually got a really nice contour on the, the landscape there and there's some, some mist. So I've zoomed in on that to try to get the overlapping contours, some of the trees and then the mist with a little bit of the, these beautiful yellow grasses uh, in the foreground. I'm at about f11 and uh, it's giving me a relatively slow shutter speed. It's not too much defini definition in the sky right now, but I think if I actually head over this way for my next composition, I'm starting to get a little bit more definition and some color. So I'm gonna head over there pretty quickly. So the sun is starting to rise now and there's a big bank of cloud on the horizon but uh, there's a little bit of colour coming in the sky. It's just a shame that uh, that bank of cloud is holding back the majority of the early morning light um, but I'm hoping that I can get over here relatively quickly because there's another stunning view with morning mist and uh, I've actually left everything on my camera ready to go. So as soon as I find a good vantage point, tripod will be down and uh, I'll get the shot. There's a fence line here and I actually can't go into the fence itself because it's a protected area. So from the platform where I got my first composition this morning, I've walked all the way down here. I can't get a clean line of sight, unfortunately. There's actually a small bush here on the left and um, I'm using that as an anchor point on the left side and then balancing the composition with the sun that's rising there and then I've got uh, the foreground grasses and I've got the, uh, the mist uh, on the valley over there so I think it's going to work quite well. Okay so now the sun is up it's lighting this this fen here with golden light really incredible light um, and you can see that I'm still with the fence line here. So I'm having to walk across and then pick and choose my composition. So there's a small tree that's just in the middle there and I put that centrally and then got the contours of the, um, the tree line over there and then put some depth into the, uh, the image with the grasses in the foreground. Uh, and again, with the illumination of the sun, that's looking really nice. So I'm going to try this with uh, portrait and then I'm actually going to go into landscape orientation and see if that works as well.
the sun's come up now and I'm actually gonna vacate the spot that I've been in um, it's amazing the sun coming up the cloud has burnt off the mist is gone and just behind the camera here there's some nice fluffy clouds uh, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get a vantage point that side today um, I've probably got about five or six photos from that spot which I'm really happy with and um, I'm now going to try and find another location um, and this location is going to require the sun to be a little bit higher in the sky because it's going to be um, in a forest area so yeah back to the car and uh, quick cup of coffee and then uh, hit the road again I've arrived and um, yeah it's gonna be quite an interesting climb <laughs> climb down there I've got my uh, wellies on I wasn't quite sure what to expect um, and the light is falling really nicely I'm actually really pleased because this was just by complete luck um, the Sun is there and uh, if I turn you around the, uh, the waterfalls down there so the lights perfectly on it um, and yeah, I did do a lot of planning looking at Google Maps, but uh, I wasn't planning on the orientation for the sun to actually fall onto it. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go for a wide composition at the top here, because um, there's quite a lot of foreground clutter. I think I'm probably gonna go for uh, a composition further down the bottom there and uh, see what I can get. I might try and do a portrait one, I might try and do a landscape one, um, focusing on the detail. So um, the water itself um, is not a huge amount of water flowing. It's more of a trickle than a cascade. So the amount of water flowing itself is very little. There's not a huge amount. Um, but I'm still going to try to create that movement effect using uh, a Lee little stopper. And um, I've said it before in previous videos, yes, it's an effect that a lot of photographers use, slowing down the shutter speed to create movement in water, moving water. I like the effect. Um, make no excuses, no apologies for it. It may be overdone, but I think it works really well. And um, as this is kind of, a, I would say, an unusual waterfall in so much as um, it's actually like a step and there isn't a lot of water. Whatever water I have got falling, uh, I actually do want to try to accentuate the movement as much as possible. So I've just put my little stopper on here and the only other filter I've got is my polarizer. Now um, the water is actually very very dark um, but on the left side there are some reflections so um, if I do get any light reflecting I want to cut that out with the polarizer because I have this contrasted shadow on the right of the frame, dappled light in the middle and then sunlight on the left. So yeah I'm going to go in the middle here, try and use some of these rocks as a little bit of foreground interest and, um, and yeah, see what I get. I've just taken a couple of shots and um, yeah, it's not working how I want it to, mainly because the, um, the main waterfall is in shadow and um, I'm just looking at the sun coming through and I'm trying to work out if it's the angle of the sun or if it's the tree that's blocking the sunlight. Um, but I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. I think I wanna wait, um, see if I can get the whole of this waterfall um, in good light. Uh, I'm looking downstream as well. I'm actually thinking that uh, a little bit later on I can work my way downstream. There might be a couple of additional compositions there as the water goes down. But for the moment, until I can get this main part of the waterfall out of the shadow, I don't think I'm gonna get the composition I want. So whilst I'm waiting for the sunlight to come round onto the main waterfall, I've just come downstream and um, um, I'm just looking for different compositions that may help me uh, bag one or two images, but also kill the time whilst I'm waiting. 
I think it's always a good idea if you can't get your main photograph to just have a wander around the area and see what else there is available. So there's a small stream here and um, again I've got contrast of shadow and light which isn't ideal but I've really zoomed in and focused on a small pool here where there's some water falling onto a rock and you've actually got some moss and uh, some jagged edges on the rocks there and some, some nice swirling patterns of the water. So I actually think that's going to work quite well. Um, yeah, with the little stopper I think I'm going to get the movement I want and um, there's some nice coloured autumn leaves in the foreground as well which will really bring some interest to the image. So I'm back at the car. It's actually getting quite busy down at the waterfall there. And uh, yeah, my apologies. I didn't show you a lot of what I was doing because I just wasn't comfortable talking to camera with so many people coming and going. Um, I wanted to work really quickly, get my images. So yeah, I'm happy with what I got. They're probably not the best images I've ever got. Um, as I was working quickly, it was it was quite challenging. The light was great, it was from behind me. So eventually the, uh, the waterfall did actually uh, open up and get some uh, nice homogeneous light on there. So you'll see the images in the video. Now I'm going to see if I can get to a third location where there should be some more waterfalls and woodland streams. Uh, again, I've never been there before so it will be a bit of an adventure. Okay, so I'm at my third location of the day and uh, it's a place that I can't pronounce. Um, Valley de Hougne, I think it's pronounced. Um, it's actually a woodland valley with a river coming through it and uh, I've just parked up, walked down the trail and um, this is what I've decided I'm going to photograph for uh, the remainder of the day. The, the light's not great, um, it's gone overcast now and uh, the water's going downstream here. I want to be photographing upstream and unfortunately the sun is uh, right above me so it's creating quite a lot of reflections. I've got my polarizer on. Uh, and even with the polarizer, the angle of the light is still creating white patches, which I can't really get rid of. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative, maybe go into the trees, try and get some shade, and um, see if I can reduce those reflections with um, some compositions that really focus in on the detail. Um, but I've just started it off here, and uh, I've got a wide angle shot, and uh, I'll head up and sort of do a little bit of rock jumping in between the stream and see what I can get. I've got my camera set up here, and I've got my polarizer on and the little stopper and you can see I'm going for this composition here and uh, there is light coming through those trees so I'm now going to go and wander up there and see what I can get in terms of uh, some uh, running water rocks and uh, some detail. I've actually got a 12 to 35 millimeter lens on the GH4, which is looking at a 2470. And so that gives me some flexibility. I've got lovely light coming in now at the top of the stream, and I've got shadows here. So I've got a little bit of foreground interest with the running water, and I'm just including a little bit of background interest as well with that. Uh, lovely light that's there, and with a lower angle, I'm able to manage those reflections much better. So I've come further upstream and as I said I was really looking for detail in the rocks and some of that moving water and I put myself under these this canopy of trees here really to try and um, shelter myself from the, the light and the reflections. There is still some light coming off some of the pools and the running water a little bit further upstream but actually the polarizer is managing that now so what I'm getting is, is looking pretty good and um, 
the light is just coming through in the uh, in the background there and really creating some some mood so I'm really happy with the images I'm getting here um, just one rookie error um, I didn't put my wellies on so <laughs> I've been walking up here in my boots and uh, the temptation to jump in and walk across is pretty strong but uh, I want to keep my feet dry because I've got at least another hour and a half stride back home when I leave today but I'm going to head up and continue and see if I can uh, get a few more shots Just walked a bit further up and I'm going to go for the last composition of the day and um, the bank is quite steep so I'm not going to go down but I've just found this uh, this foot holding between these two trees and I'm going to put my tripod here get an angle down there's some overlying branches that I'm going to try and keep out and I'm going to focus in on these rocks and the uh, the stream that's there and that'll be my last composition uh, probably do it portrait orientation and again use the same filters polarizer and a little stopper to get that movement. Uh -huh. 